few years ago, more years than I care to actually remember, I picked up this little device. This is an Aperture MC. It's basically a little rechargeable battery with an LED light panel on the front, full control over RGB, full control over color temperature, uh, a bunch of scenes, special effects things that honestly rarely get used by anyone, and of course, inevitably, some form of app control. Aperture is a great company that make great products, and I have to admit that this was a game changer in my work. To be honest, at the time, I had a bunch of lights. I have strobe lights and I have continuous lights. I have great big modifiers. One is right here lighting me up. I've got all sorts of lights, but what I had at the time was all basically quite large or uh, basically daylight, daylight color, this white clean color that you see on me right now, which is very, very useful for most things that I do. But considering the fact that I shoot a lot of product photography or I do a lot of product video, it's a lot of close up stuff, being able to throw in a splash of color, being able to dial in the exact color that I want, maybe to contrast the product, maybe to match the product, being able to fit a little thing like this into the scene or behind something where it couldn't be seen, all of that was amazing. Fact is, is I liked it so much that I ended up getting about four or five more. I've got six of them, actually, yeah, six. I've got six in total. Uh, to be honest, they were quite expensive. Uh, they were new at the time when they came out, but now they're about $150. This device is not what the product or the video is currently about. This is just to set the ground for where I am. Because the downfall of these is that the battery in there is not replaceable, so eventually, with enough use and enough recharging cycles, it will eventually die, it gets to need to be, uh, to be replaced. This is inevitable with this sort of device. Uh, so recently, given the price point of it and a couple of other pain points that I'll get into in a second, I started looking around recently for other options and I found this little device that I reviewed quite recently. This is about a quarter of the price of the Aperture version and provides about 75% of the functionality. No app control in here. Um, not quite as high a quality output of light, not quite as accurate in color, but relatively inexpensive. I could get three or four of these for the price of that aperture. And that's kind of cool. The thing is, is that, like I said, I do a lot of small product shots, so a lot of close up work, and being able to have something small and fit it into the scene is nice, but sometimes I want a little bit bigger. I don't want as big as, as, as what I've got around here, and of course they don't have color, Big panels with color, the big square panels that you see, or the big rectangular ones, they're quite pricey. I haven't really gotten around to springing for one of those yet. Hard to justify. I need larger, but not massive. I still need all the functionality that I get from the MC. So I came across this product, the one that I'm gonna show you today. I've had it for uh, four or five months now. I've been using it consistently. Let me tell you that since the day this arrived, it has been used in every single product that, or project that I do, whether it's a film, a video, a product, um, photography, whatever I do, this has been in there somehow to the point where I'm actually thinking that I might wanna get two or three more of these now. Uh, this costs about $130 Australian at this point. So it is comparable to the apertures, but you can see the size comparison. It is very, very similar in features, but it is quite a lot bigger and has a wider light spread. There are times when this is perfect. It fits into the, the scene or into the little spot where I need to put it perfectly. I can hide it and have light shooting out wherever I need, but sometimes I need a wider spread. I need more coverage. This is also specifically great for backgrounds. You can place it somewhere behind something and it will light up your background without being seen and you don't need to put two or three uh, apertures in there. Anyway, before I go on too much about this, why don't we cut it all short, go down to the table. I'll take a look at what's in the box, all the bits and pieces, because the accessory bundle is quite impressive. We will go through the functionality of it. I know I've already filmed it, so there's one part where I get a little tied up, but we'll, we'll sort that out. I'll, we'll do that and we'll talk a little bit more in a sec. See you down there. Okay, so this is the box that the RGB one comes in. Fairly straightforward looking box. A Little bit of information about what the device is and what it does on the side. Uh, a bunch of legal stuff and some uh, QC codes for the uh, website and the app and all that sort of stuff on the back. Straightforward box. What you get on the inside though is quite comprehensive. You do of course get the light itself. We'll, we'll look closer at that in one second, but you get a bunch of other things. First of all, you're gonna get this. Um, 
I know it looks a little odd. It is a, a sort of a Ziploc baggy type thing. Rather than make the device itself fully waterproof, this is kind of interesting. You can click this open and I'll show you. It does look like it's not gonna work, but when you click these open, that opens all the way up. Let's get that there. Opens up like that. Looks like a small hole. It is a tight fit, but you can fit the entire light in there. Once it's in, close it up and it should be pretty much waterproof. You can throw this in a sink under bubbles for some special effects. You can do some ex exceptional tank photography if you're using a fish tank or something. If you're out in the field, you could actually throw this in a lake or in some running water like a stream or something and get some really interesting light effects by having the light strobing through underneath the water. So that's kind of an actually cool little thing. You do get a little, uh, I will never ever use it, but you get this little sock. It's a velvet sock for carrying it if you want to look after the device. Uh, I forgot to show you this little lanyard thing. This actually was packaged with the bag, so I think it's for, for uh, attaching to the bag. You can see because it's got that. But you've also got this version here. This is a 510 connection, so you can actually, not 510 quarter thread, a quarter thread. So you can actually connect that to the end of the light if you need to hang it from something or if you just want to use it handheld, swing it around, all that sort of stuff. You do get a USB-C charging cable to get the thing up and running and it's a heavy duty little nice cable. You do get four of these little 3M metal mounts. These are non-magnetic, but they do stick to whatever you want. And the reason for that is that the back of this has magnets built in like that. So if you ever need to magnet mount it somewhere and it's not metal, uh, to the bottom of a wood shelf perhaps, uh, you could use those to give yourself some mounting points. As well as all of that, yes, uh, a bunch of manuals and paperwork. This is quite a heavy duty instruction manual for the entire device. This is just a guide to get you online and get the app. There's QC codes in there if you want. And uh, yeah, some customer service information. All of that and on top of that, yes, this grid thing, which I will show you in more detail in one sec. We're gonna keep that here. We're gonna keep the light. Let's move all the junk over there. Can I just say that the amount of accessories in the box for a light of this size, of this quality, and this price point is phenomenal. There's one other thing that I didn't show you in terms of accessories. Of course, I'm showing you the light now. These bits on the end, they are removable bumpers. They're just to protect it. Uh, if you drop it, you don't want to crack the corners or anything, so they just fit on like that. I'm going to take them off for now because I don't really like them, but uh, you know, they are handy. They're, they're a safe device. This is the device, and as you can see, it's fairly long. It's fairly uh, rounded and you do have a diffusion panel on the front here. So the light that comes from it is not really, really hard. It's also not highly directional. It does go out in a direction sort of like so. And also now I'm showing you that you can see there is that uh, mounting point on both ends. I really like the fact that there's mounting point on both ends because you can mount this to a stand. You can mount this to arms or whatever you want, depending what you need in your studio or whatever you're using. But also on top of that, you could take two of these. There are little, uh, adapters that you can get that will fit here. So you could attach two of them together. You could attach three of them uh, to make a, a longer arm if you wanted, or if you're in a situation where you need some lighting and you have other accessories that you need to, uh, to mount, you can mount them on the top. Dep you know, options are a good thing. Down the side and the back, we have all the controls and the screen. Of course, there is a screen and a brand name. There is a little sticker here that you're probably not gonna be able to read on camera, but it does give you information as to what each of these buttons are. And once you know that, you can peel it off and take it away. But I'm gonna leave this on here forever because chances are, I will forget. I will forget what each thing does. Um, Moving through the other side, there is your type C charging port. Of course, a little sticker there that I'll probably remove eventually and your main buttons. Your buttons are as follows. This one is a power button. So just a long press on there. will start the whole thing up. This one is your mode button. This one is your settings button. This is your minus and your plus. So when you're adjusting anything, those will do that. And this is a multi-function button uh, with a long press. What it does is it turns on or off the, uh, the Bluetooth or the 2.4, yeah, 2.4G Bluetooth. So you can connect to your phone for app control. And with a short press, what it does is it turns off this, this touch bar right here. Let's get into that in a second though. So one long press there. And as you can see, there is our light on. Fair amount of power. Oh, and I hit that touch bar and you can see when I hit it, it's changing color. Look at that. That is what that touch bar does. When you hit that, and here's the thing. It's, 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 it's kind of cool, but it's kind of annoying. 
if there's any downside to this, it, it's this bar here. It's just a bit weird. Uh, what it is, is basically, as you can see, there is a, a gradient rainbow on the uh, touch bar. And wherever you touch that, that's where a color is going to change. Let's see. Uh, go all the way through. So up into the red. It's not quite accurate to where you're touching it, but it will get you into the ballpark of what you want. Anytime you touch that, you, I was in the uh, basic white mode, so I'll go back to that. My CCT mode. So I'm in basic color right here, and I can adjust anything that I want. I can adjust the color temperature, but if I touch this, boom, immediately goes back into the HSI, the, which is really, really annoying. However, there's a, a workaround for that. If I go and I just quickly press that button, now I've turned that off and back into my CCT and if I touch that, nothing happens. To tell you the truth, I pretty much keep the touch bar off at all times. I almost never use it. I'd be more than happy if it wasn't a feature in the device. However, the rest of it is pretty phenomenal. Like I said, on your screen here, you can see your mode at the top. You can see the channel that you're in. You've got your output, which is 100 watts. Uh, you got your color settings there and there. So if I, uh, where is it? If I check my settings button, I can cycle through these. So that's my uh, intensity. We'll keep that high. Go to the, whoop, I changed modes. This is what happens when you hit the wrong button. There you go. Now I can adjust this. And I can see the color is changing hue and temperature. And if I select the next one, whoops, I hit the mode again. I always do that. And my color temperature, I can adjust it to be cooler or warmer depending on my scene or my settings. It's a little bit slow. You can see that number changing there. So you can adjust this light to match whatever scene and whatever uh, other lights that you have. Now, it's a less expensive light. It's not going to be as accurate as, say, a higher... Um, higher quality studio light or something like that but with that said i would say that it doesn't really matter because it is uh fully adjustable and you can basically get it to close enough to where you want and then fine tune the color temperature to be pretty much exactly what you need with that said let's move on to the next mode we've got an hsi which of course the settings here are your intensity your saturation and your hue uh, same thing we're going to hit this button here to select which one of the settings we want so the hue is there plus or minus so i can move my way all the way down all the different colors or i could go the other way and of course saturation if i want a uh, less intense light uh, it's at 100% right now, but if I want to bring that down so that green is not quite... See, it's just slightly green. Bring it back up again. It's a little bit more green. Bring it all the way up. And now it's fully saturated, at least as saturated as this light will get. Moving through the other modes, we have our scene mode, and this is where things get interesting because you have uh, your intensity, and not much else there, but you see these little buttons here. So if I click through this, um, can't really read them very well. No, that's not what I want. Where was it? That's my intensity. My scene. I'll be honest get a little bit lost at this point because I never use the special effects. I don't think anyone really does. Uh, it is highlighted there. I'm just trying to remember exactly how to change those settings. Um, that is changing my intensity. There it is. Ah, just like anything else. Okay, there we go. We can go through that. What is this? This is I believe this is a fire, a flickering fire. Is uh, uh, cop cars? Is it uh, something? I'm not sure. Something else? Another one. There is a whole range of special effects in here. If you want, oh, there you go. Your your, your lightning flashes there. Like I said, 
I don't think many people really use these special effects, especially, you know, definitely not when it comes to photography and for video work, occasionally you might need uh, lightning effects or uh, uh, flickering TV or that sort of thing. Let's move back up to there. I'm just gonna click it back into the regular mode, which is the CCT. That's pretty much it for the uh, device. It's very, very straightforward. Um, gives you an idea of the strength of the light. As you can see, it is a decent size. It is quite solid. Like I said before, a couple of magnets in the end there, so you can mount this to just about anything you want, as well as the uh, attachments on the sides. One thing I haven't shown you yet is this little piece here, and this is actually really, really cool. Uh, as you can see, when I put it like this, you can see the light is just spilling out in all directions. It is fairly round. It is not a 360 degree light. As you can see, there's no light coming back here, but it is fairly wide beam sort of angle. So not a lot of control there. And that's where this comes in. Bigger lights, more traditional lights have things very similar to this. This is called a grid. And this is just a little tiny thing that you can actually strap onto there with a couple of um, bits of elastic. So we'll actually make it more comfortable. And as you can see, that touch bar has reactivated on its own. There we go. So bring it back to our blue color. There you go. And as you can see, you can see that line right there where it's literally controlling. Instead of being really, really wide, it is now controlled to be... In fact, if I just put my hand, you can see it's not hitting this hand. As soon as I bring it in, it starts hitting the hand. So it's a lot more controlled in terms of the light spread. So if you were to be doing a product for example, this almost empty cup of coffee that I happen to have right here. If you're doing a product and you wanted to bring in a rim light from the side and you wanted to just hit the handle, but you didn't want it spilling out and hitting your camera lens, which might be over here, uh, you could use something like that. And you also, maybe you don't want it to hit your background. See, this light is actually not going to hit the background at all. You can see where it's landing on the, on the, uh, on the desk here. If it was like that, also, you could do it like that. You could have a light hitting the background without actually ever touching your subject if you're shooting side on, not direct on like I am here. Very, very useful little tool and something that you do not see that often with lights of this size. Uh, I have to say, once again, get really annoyed by that touch bar. Let's um, turn it back on, put it where I want it, turn it off. There you go. There we go. So that is the details. Let's go back up top. Let's talk about the features, uh, the device in use, how I feel about it, how you might use it, all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you up there. So that was the newer RGB one light wand, light stick, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it is, in my mind, a great value for money. $130 Australian, you're gonna find it for about a hundred, less than $100 American if you're in the States. And I think that if you are a photographer or a videographer, you can do, uh, you, you can do far, far worse than pick up one of these for your kit. It is a phenomenal tool. Just by being able to, as I said, place a little bit of light into a scene just to make something pop. Even if you're if you're used to using daylight, if you're happy with it, this would be a great starting place. Uh, a lot of times you want a little bit of rim light, a little bit of light on the back just to bring a product out or to make something stand up from the background. This fits into those scenarios perfectly. You can dial in the color temperature exactly to be where you want. Um, if you want a little spot of color somewhere, again, this is, has enough of a, of a wide shot uh, or a wide angle wide fill that compared to something like this, um, it can fill out an area quite well. Now it is only 10 watts. It isn't the highest power light. I definitely wouldn't recommend it as your main light or your key light in any sort of uh, real world scenario. But if you're doing, like I said, close up product shots, uh, all that sort of stuff, it's phenomenal. If you are into or want to experiment with, uh, uh, what, what's that thing? Um, color swirls. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, slow sh shutter speed, color swirl stuff. I don't do a lot of that, but this is a perfect little handheld device again for that. You can cycle through colors, you can move it around, you can get all that sort of stuff going on if you want. Lots of mounting options, of course, the uh, 
points on both ends. The magnets are fantastic. I have a cart that I use. I pretty much keep all my little bits and tools and I slide it into wherever I'm working at any point in time. And I've got this and all of these and any other lights that I've got just slapped on the side so I can reach for what I need when I need it. I think that's fantastic, but it also works really, really well for clamping onto bars, to ceilings, to um, uh, anything that's magnetic. Of course, if it's not magnetic, you do have, you have these. Although, I haven't used these yet simply because they're kind of a one-time deal. It's a sticker on one side, so I mean, once it's up there, it's up there. But aside from that, I think there's a lot of uses for this. I think it's really, really good. I will say the same thing I said when I did the review of this, which is that the color temperature and the color, the RGB colors, they may not be as 100% accurate as you would get from Aperture or a higher level brand. Those devices are really, really finely tuned and when it says 5600, you can be pretty self-assured that they are 5600. These devices, they're not quite as high end, you're not gonna have as much accuracy with the color there. But as I said, because it's not something where it's, it's switched to you know daylight and tungsten, one or the other, it's a sliding scale, it doesn't really matter too much. If you have daylight over here and you wanna match it with this, get it into the, the right ballpark and then you can fine tune it to work well. Uh, just use your eyeballs, use your best guess. Uh, it should work just, as, just fine for that. And with that and the price point, I think it's a phenomenal little tool. If you are, uh, uh, like I said, if you're into photography as a hobby, this is be a great addition to your kit, just a big step up to allow you to experiment, play with light. Uh, if you are into content creation and video or photography, you already know that it's all about the control and the manipulation of light. That's what everything is about. And having more tools, more modifiers, more colors, more ability to adjust and control that light in any given scenario is the key. It's more important than fancy cameras. It's, uh, as I'm loath to say it with that shelf of lenses behind me, but it is, squeaky chair, it is definitely more important than, than all the glass in the world, controlling and manipulating your light. I definitely need two or three more of these. Uh, given what I do, I'll probably buy uh, two or three more other things just so I have a reason to do another review. That's the way things work around here. Anyway, with that all said, I wanna thank you for your time. I'm not gonna tell you that you have to go out and buy this to, to be good, but I will say that if you wanna be better, buy something and learn to master it. Learn to control your, 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 your output. Let's put it that way. If you've enjoyed this video, if you enjoy this type of content, please leave a comment below. Please thumbs up the video. It really does help the channel. And if you'd like to see more of this sort of stuff on the channel, let me know down there. If you have any specific devices that you'd love to see, I can't promise to always do them because I fund this myself. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'd be interested to hear what, you, what you'd like to see. With that said, I'm done. Thank you so much. And yeah, be creative. <laughs>